Hello there and welcome back to the Master Moldy channel. Today we'll be looking at customs and comparing them to some of the most detailed Lego minifigures and seeing how well they hold up. But you may remember a while ago I asked you over on a few community polls what sort of customs you prefer and I made the mistake of comparing them with Boba Fett because the Lego Boba Fett is amazing and I don't think people understood that I was trying to ask generally and people were just choosing the Lego Boba Fett because it's a really cool minifigure that came out in the mech. Less cool that it come in the Sarlacc, but the minifigure still looks awesome. And in order for this to be a good comparison video, I have what I think is a good range of Lego minifigures, which means I will not be including any of the classic style of astronauts or anything else because they're quite plain minifigures beside the torso printing but I have a regular Lego City person who tends to be the similar style to a named character in Star Wars who might only get a few seconds screen time so they haven't put too much effort into the character but it still looks good in Lego form and we also have one of Lego's own themes here from Dreams we have Matteo who has a lot more design and thought going into the character because Lego want to make this figure look as good as they can on shelves, on displays, and it also comes with some really nice dual molded legs. Sticking to the theme, we do have a few CMFs such as the Looney Tunes CMF, which comes with Sylvester here, who once again has his own mold for the head, which we don't see too often, but there is one of these customs that do have their own mold. For the most part, Lego just print a or mold a helmet to go over a regular minifigure head, which is the case for Legends of Chima here. You can see there's no special molds to the head. In fact, the only time that I can recall we've seen that is with the recent Pinocchio in the Disney 100 CMF. And then we also have someone from the Disney CMF. You can see some side of leg print in there on Hercules as well as arm printing and I think it really captures that side of the leg and arm detailing very, very well because, well, we'll start off with Firestar Toys printed arms. Now, these aren't custom minifigures, but just custom arms you can add to your minifigures. I've got these on so many of my clones. Every one of my Luke minifigures have had a custom arm at some point. I've recently upgraded my X-Wing Pilot to the official UCS printed arms, but I do also have printed arms on my Luke Snowspeeder costume because I really think that printed arms are a big step up. We're seeing it on so many common characters, even this old dictionary exclusive celebration outfit Luke. You might not realize, but he does have a pattern going up the sleeves, which I believe is the same pattern as the Snowspeeder costume and I've also got the printed arms for Greedo which share that pattern but as I'm not showing any of my clone troopers I thought I'd show you the Stormtrooper Luke just to give you an idea of how much detail it adds especially with that gap in the armor on the elbow. It stops the arms from being white and in the case of Hercules perhaps you just need some gauntlets on the lower arm so that is what Ahsoka has here and Lego have now introduced that for the official minifigure but to compare, let's take Ahsoka and Hercules. The official Lego versions tend to skip over a few of the details. For instance, we looked at the Firestar Toys X-Wing Pilot Luke arms and they had so many creases of the jacket. They're just that extra bit of detail, but I honestly think Lego might take the cake in this category because you don't need that much detail on the arms. You don't need every wrinkle or unless they're Wolverine, you don't need every hair on the arm. So I really like how Lego print their minifigures, but I would like to see more of it, especially for characters like Inquisitors, because it does make the minifigures look so much better, but not as good as if they each had their own molded Lego headpiece. Now, what I mean by this is a regular Lego head that has the extra accessories that you'll see on some of the species. This is mainly looking at Star Wars here, but this Ninth Sister minifigure looks really, really cool with these two little bits sticking out at the bottom of the head. The head is otherwise a regular Lego minifigure head. This is a custom minifigure, and we'll take a look at their Boba Fett in just a second. But this minifigure has so much detail. You can also switch it out for a smooth minifigure head. But after seeing Pinocchio, I'd love to see more custom producers work on details like this. And you can just see all the detailing on the torso is definitely up there with Lego, including some back printing and a really nice shoulder piece here, which 
I do wish Lego would use more, but I understand in terms of play why they try to go without. And taking a look at the other one, we have Boba Fett here. Now, I think Boba Fett is way, way too over the top. I agree with all of you that voted in the poll. I think the chess piece is quite a nice addition, but all the accessories do stop this from being a minifigure. And at what point does this turn into just another action figure. There are so many accessories on this, and I do feel like this Boba in particular would have been fine with just the chest piece and a regular helmet, or perhaps adding the extra helmet accessories, but with the extra helmet accessories, the chest piece, the belt, the jetpack, which is really cool because it's on that Paz Vizsla chest piece with a backpack that pops off. Really fun for play in case Boba some point loses his backpack, but then you also have the custom blaster which we'll take a look at a few custom blasters as well in a second i think this boba fett strays too far from lego and i'd rather have the lego version and i do have to emphasize that i like custom minifigures that make characters lego haven't and probably won't do like the ninth sister here but sometimes they also improve upon older lego minifigures which is the case with this custom torso and legs for obi-wan kenobi now this torso and legs is to represent Kenobi from the Clone Wars and he does have 360 degree printing which is really really nice. These aren't official Lego parts which when it comes to customs I don't understand why so many companies are trying to start off with official Lego parts and because Lego is pretty expensive plastic it's very high quality but it's also very expensive. It means they are charging so much for the actual minifigure or the parts of the minifigure as not all of them come with a complete minifigure and Lego is prone to cracking. So if a minifigure cracks that cost you 30, 40 pound recently, there's been so many problems with CAC and GCC. There's no real way to get a replacement for your minifigure. Of course, they charge for all this detailed printing that they do. So you could probably get a replacement through Lego but you're still gonna have to pay if you want that extra cool printing. We've got side of the arm printing, but we've also got side of the torso printing, which Lego, it's just not worth the money to try and do. This torso is gonna be covered from the arm and it will be really interesting to see if that printing does fade away over time. But the detail on this Clone Wars Kenobi, honestly, just can't be beat by Lego. So rather than Lego trying to tackle the Clone Wars, I think some minifigures are best left to the customs who can spend that extra money getting that extra cool detail. So Kenobi definitely takes the cake over the Lego version, which I'll put on screen for you now, just so you can see how much extra detail Kenobi has. But I also got a mystery bag, which is actually where Boba Fett comes from, because as I said, it's more action figure than Lego minifigure. And in that mystery bag, you may have already seen, we did get a Lando. This looks very, very close to the official Lego version, so it wouldn't really be one that I pick up. But I have to show you the 360 degree printing on the belt. You can see when the camera focuses that this hip piece is printed not only on the front and back, but also on the side and the top of the leg as well, which is just something Lego wouldn't give us. And... Perhaps you might think it is a little bit unnecessary, but if you are displaying this minifigure without the cape and wanted a photo with Lando with his back turned, it's just that extra detail that looks really, really nice when taking photos. So perhaps it's not as good quality as a Lego minifigure, but in images, it will still look pretty cool. Now, the third minifigure I got in that mystery bag is one that Lego definitely has a better figure for, and that is this Mace Windu here. And Mace actually came with a BB-8 droid. I mean, the company did seem to just whack these droids in with some random minifigures. So perhaps it was for characters like Mace that don't have many extra accessories. But as you can see, the printing on the arm, all the folds of Mace's costume, just take away from the classic Lego look and make it look just not as good as the clean printing on Lego's version. So sometimes this printing can be too much, but in cases like Kenobi, I think this 360 printing really does make the minifigure look good. And also Kenobi is going to be front and center of these mock displays and any photos you are taking. So you'd really want one minifigure just to draw the attention away from the issues of the rest. Lego recently have brought back the B2 battle droid, which looks really, really cool. 
but I really like the Lego version that has the rocket arm and there are customs out there that allow you to purchase this version. Of course, these are not official Lego elements, but they look just as good. The quality is actually pretty close. It would be very difficult to tell between the two different materials. They look exactly the same on camera and you can get yourself a few more droids for your droid army without having to break the bank and buying collector's versions. Now, I do think customs do help with the hobby of collecting Lego because rather than buying an older version, damaging it, and every time a Lego minifigure breaks, it will indirectly up the price of the remaining versions because there's only a limited amount of these older figs made. Of course, these B2s are still in production, so they're not gonna be worth as much as the older versions. But if you do want to get a few of the older droids and you don't wanna wait around until Lego makes them again because Lego tend not to re-release droids and other less popular characters and only stick to the stars of the respective movie. So if you do want some of these rocket droids, keep an eye out. There's a video in the works coming out very, very soon, which will show you the easiest way to get these customs. But I do really like the fact that a load of customs are going into old retired Lego minifigures and making them available at such a low cost. To celebrate 25 years of The Phantom Menace, I actually went and got myself a custom Queen Amidala. Now, this cost a very, very small fraction of what the official minifigure will cost, and because I want to display it in mocks and actually play with it like it is a Lego minifigure, I decided to buy a custom because if I spent hundreds of pounds on a minifigure and it ended up just breaking on me or cracking, and Lego are unable to do anything about it. They don't make these minifigures anymore. There is no chance of me getting any sort of refunds from the person I'm buying it from because it's not their problem that I'm playing with it and it cracks. Whereas this figure cost me a couple of pounds and if it does crack, I can just buy another one and use that on my next display, diorama, mock, or even just keep it on a shelf because the chances are Lego are never gonna make Queen Amidala again. This year would have been the perfect year to bring her back with the 25 years of Lego Star Wars also happening this year. And instead they gave us a Brickheads, which by the way, is a really, really cool Brickheads. Nothing against the Brickheads, but if anyone does want the minifigure, I'd recommend going with a custom designer. And some other minifigures that LEGO have also only made once include Zeb Aurelius, who does now show up in Ahsoka. Well, how are we gonna get our hands on the Zeb? Perhaps you don't even want the full figure and you just want the head to display on one of your custom Zeb minifigures, such as the blue pilot design from Ahsoka. Well, this custom headpiece is pretty cool. It's a replica made based on the original Lego version, but once again, Lego are no longer making any Zeb Aureliuses. So the price of the minifigure is so, so expensive. You're looking at a hundred pounds just to get your hands on the head most likely. But some people do consider these cheap knockoffs and would rather pay the really high prices for the other minifigures. And I would love to hear what your thoughts are down in the comments below about customs of minifigures. As you can see, I try to go with minifigures that Lego either haven't made before or have made a long, long time ago and just don't have anywhere near the detail of a new minifigure. I mean, Lego haven't even tried printing on the sides of torsos as far as I'm aware. And We've got the Cal Kestis in a 25th anniversary minifigure, which just confirms that LEGO have no plans to make a set based on the games. And if you've played the first two and want the Inquisitors or the Purge Troopers, then the only way is to get them through customs, unless we end up getting a movie release based on the game in 20, 30 years time. So it's up to you, but rather than waiting, I'd rather have the minifigures to play and display right now. And last but not least, I definitely think we've covered more than 10 different custom designers, but we have the perfect minifigure scale R2-D2. In fact, it's a struggle for me to display them on the display here, but comparing them with a regular Lego droid, you can see they're about three quarters of the size, which I think is perfect because as I said in my minifigure height video, the height of an astromech is roughly the height of a Lego astromech laid back. This minifigure right here is minifigure scout. Honestly, this is the perfect custom minifigure in my opinion. I really like the ninth sister, but I think I have to give the cape to R2-D2 here. He is the perfect size for displaying 
in photos and the best thing is it still works like a regular lego r2 if you can pop off the head you can see there is one stud there you can't rotate the head which is a bit annoying but you can position the head at the four intervals you can of a regular lego droid and there is actually back printing on this custom version so this is technically my first r2d2 with back printing and this will definitely be the version i use for all of my mocks and any photographs you see over on instagram and with custom minifigures always come custom accessories so we have a few weapons here this is han or lando's blaster which does usually come with a few different minifigures i've got a few variations of this blaster and it is really cool to see such a detailed weapon and then we also have this blaster here as well as i think i have a few of the stormtrooper rifles as well somewhere in my collection they're probably on display in my stormtrooper somewhere and the custom weapons are quite fun compared to the official lego varieties because if you were to compare the two one of them is definitely more detailed but i really like the look of lego's weapons so it really depends what character i'm giving the blaster to because if they were just a soldier such as a clone a stormtrooper i'd probably settle with the lego version but even lego aren't perfect you can see lego's purple lightsaber is quite dark compared to this custom blade i have here which is a lot lighter in person it doesn't actually show up that much lighter on camera but it looks closer to the shade that windu has in the show and lego aren't perfect there is a bubble in this blade it's a very small bubble but if you can see it just at the tip of my finger on the left and customs are getting really good at making sure their products don't have bubbles in there is one at the end again but as i said it's not far off the lego version so it's a much nicer color it's just a shame that the hilt isn't as good but you can always use this blade with a lego hilt to make the perfect windu saber so i know a load of you don't like cheap lego knockoffs but as i said most of these minifigures are minifigures lego haven't done haven't done for a while so they're not getting the new features like arm printing leg printing and that side of the torso printing on Kenobi is absolutely mind blowing. I think that might be the next step for Lego unless they decide to do dual molded hands, which honestly, good luck to anyone that is trying. But let me know down in the comments what you think about customs. Have I changed your mind on any customs? Are you interested in getting some Fallen Order characters that Lego you now know are not going to make because some of these customs are really detailed for really, really cheap, which is a lot better than some of the high end customs that try to use that official lego piece personally i don't want to be spending a set price tag on just one minifigure but let me know down in the comments check out all the videos on screen now and may the bricks be with you always